In the cold early morning hours on November 8, 1996, in Bismarck, North Dakota, the police received a call about a naked woman running down the street acting hysterical. This led police to a house on a corner a few blocks away. They found a husband and wife, Keith Mathers and Marion, inside the house sitting on the couch, holding hands, the husband shaking uncontrollably. What they uncovered upon searching the house left police sickened and baffled. Marion refused to utter a word to the police. Keith, however, had no problem telling them everything that had taken place. This is his interview with the police. Thank God for saving me. What I'm about to tell you will make you question your existence. I met Marion, or as she likes to be called now, Radna, 22 years ago in a small dive of a bar downtown. Late one night, I was sitting there alone drinking my beer when she came and sat down next to me and said, I'm going to show you things you wouldn't believe. My first thought was, either this woman is going to be exciting or she's just plain crazy. I was 23 years old at the time and I'd never been with a girl or had a girlfriend, so I wasn't sure how to act or what to think. I pretty much let her take the lead. We started going out and a year later were married. Several years went by where nothing much happened. I'd go to work, come home, watch TV, and we'd go out on the weekends. It wasn't until the fifth year we'd been together my life took a drastic turn and something was revealed to me. Something truly unbelievable and frightening. I don't remember the exact date, but I remember it was the middle of summer, July, I think. I was laying in bed when I heard Marion moving around on the bed, more than your usual roll over on your side. As she was moving about, I heard her whispering something over and over again. It took me a bit to figure out what she was saying, but she was saying, hungry. At first I chuckled, thinking she must be dreaming when suddenly she sprang up from the bed, took off running out of the room and out the front door. What in the hell? I said aloud as I got up from the bed and ran to the front door to see what she was doing. When I made it to the front door, stepped outside and looked around, she was nowhere in sight. I shouted out to her multiple times, but got no answer. After a few minutes, I went back inside, grabbed the car keys, and decided to drive around to see if I could find her. I drove around for what I guessed to be an hour before finally coming home. I decided to call the police once I made it back home. As I pulled in the driveway, I could see the front door was wide open, but the house was dark. I knew before I left, I'd turn off all the lights and shut the door. So I was a little nervous and confused, but also relieved, thinking Marion had come back home. When I got to the front door, and before going inside, I called out, Marion, are you here? As I stood there in silence, getting no response, I could feel the hairs on my arm begin to stand up, and fear shot through me. I flicked on the light near the front door and started walking towards our bedroom, assuming if she was home, then that's where she'd be. I slowly walked through the house, not knowing what to expect. The house was dead silent, and I swear I could hear the beats of my heart. When I got within a few feet of our bedroom, I heard the faint sounds of growling and what sounded like something being torn. I started trembling as I walked into our room and turned on the light. I gasped as I couldn't believe what I was seeing. There on the floor was the naked, bloody body of a young female. Marion was crouched over the body as she slowly raised her head, looking up at me. Her face was covered in blood, and a piece of flesh was hanging from her mouth. Marion, what the hell are you doing? I asked. She said nothing, just went back to ripping pieces of flesh from the body of the young lady. I noticed Marion looked slightly different as well. The color of her skin had changed to a more yellowish color and she appeared to be slightly bigger in size. I turned to run back to the kitchen to call the police when she jumped up, ran towards me, and slammed me into the wall. She got within inches of my face and said, No police, Keith. I could see her eye color had changed as well. They appeared to be green. Her normal eye color was brown. Marion, what in the hell are you doing? I asked. Call me Radna, she responded. What? What are you talking about? I asked. I'm finally transforming, Keith, she said as she turned, went back to the body, and continued consuming it. I stood there in disbelief, torn between calling the police and trying to process everything that was happening. I knew I should call the police immediately, but for some reason, I couldn't. My mind was shouting, 
turned around, go call the police, now, but I could not make my body obey my commands. I watched her consume half of the girl's body before she dragged it under the bed. She then looked up at me, blood dripping from her chin, and said, Get into bed, Keith. I said nothing, simply nodded my head and made my way to my side of the bed. It was weird, but when my head hit the pillow, I was instantly out, going into a deep sleep. Keith, wake up, said Marion. I was startled awake to see her standing over me. For a split second, I was hoping what happened last night was a dream. That thought quickly diminished as I saw she was naked and looked as if she'd purposely covered herself in the young lady's blood. Oh shit, Marion, what have you done? Who are you? You're not my wife, I said. I am who you married. I'm finally transforming into my true nature. You will call me Raidna from now on, she responded. What in God's name are you talking about? I asked. You've always wondered why I never talked about my past or my parents. It's because I killed and ate them when I was born. They were simply a means to birth me into this world. I come from an almost extinct ancient species. Centuries ago, we were killed off to the point there were only three of my kind left. The remaining three kept our species alive by keeping our numbers low. They would breed with the human, using her body to birth us so we were able to feed immediately upon birth. When we come out, we do not look like others. Our true selves are terrifying to humans, she said. I laid there in utter belief as she told me this. After what I saw last night, anything was possible, I thought. Once I'm done feeding on the body of that girl, you will find me another female and bring her home alive. They must always be alive, and I will always need a fresh corpse under the bed. Understood? If I run out of meat, the urge to feed on whoever is closest to me will be too great. Do you understand? She said. I nodded my head, meaning I knew she'd feed on me if she ran out of meat. She then went down to the basement to do God knows what. I wasn't about to follow her. As I laid there in bed, shocked and scared to death, I wasn't sure what to do. I knew I should call the authorities, but I knew they wouldn't believe a word of what Marion just told me. I also knew I might get blamed. Another factor was I still loved her, as weird as that sounds. A few hours later, she came up from the basement, went to the bedroom, pulled the half-eaten corpse out from under the bed and ate the rest of it until there wasn't much left except for the bones. It made me sick to my stomach thinking she'd eaten everything from the body. There wasn't even any blood left on the floor or on the bones. They'd been licked clean. I sat at the kitchen table for hours that day, staring at the wall. I was not myself. I felt empty and lost. My mind was gone. When the sun started setting, Marion came into the kitchen and said, Keith, go find me more meat tomorrow. I'll need it every three days, and sometimes I will go with you. I looked at her and said nothing, simply nodded my head. She then turned, started walking back to the bedroom as she said, Get rid of the bones from this one as well. Tear shot through me as I was actually considering doing what she told me. There was still a small part of my mind saying, You can't actually be serious about helping her but it was like I couldn't control myself. The following day must have been Sunday because I had the day off from work. I didn't sleep at all the night before as I couldn't stop thinking about what I was about to do. After a while, my thoughts turned to how I was going to go about getting her more meat, as she called it. When I got out of bed that morning, I could sense something inside me had changed, and not for the better. I put the bones from the girl into a garbage bag, ate breakfast, then made my way to the local hardware store to buy the tools I'd need to go get her more meat. Once I picked up the necessary tools I'd need, I set off. I knew I had to leave Bismarck to find her more meat, and the further away from our hometown, the better. Sometime later, I started calling the girls I kidnapped for her meat, as it made it easier for me not to think of them as fellow humans. I drove along I-94 until I came to Jamestown, quickly stopping to toss the bag of bones into one of the many ponds along the way. When I arrived, it was getting to be dusk, and I planned on going to the university to find her meat, as I knew there'd be plenty of options there. I must have circled the dorm buildings around the university a hundred times, sweating bullets before I made the decision to just do it. I picked a dorm that was closest to the main road and wasn't well lit. 
There were a lot of girls coming and going as I parked, so I decided to wait until later in the night when I could catch a girl by herself and in an area that appeared to be the best spot to grab someone based on where I was parked. After several hours, I could see things had died down. I got out of my car, opened the trunk, grabbed the wooden axe handle I was going to hit the girl over the head with, walked over to the large tree I planned on hiding behind and stood there waiting. About 20 minutes later, I saw a girl heading my way from the opposite direction. I stood there as my knees shook wildly. I was scared to death, but just couldn't stop myself. When she passed the tree with her back to me, I quickly ran up behind her and swung the axe handle as hard as I could. I heard a loud thunk as it struck home. The girl crumpled to the ground in an instant. I bent down, picked her up, threw her over my shoulder in a fireman's carry, and walked as fast as I could towards my car without looking behind me. Adrenaline shot through me like nothing I've ever felt. I won't lie, it felt exhilarating. Once I made it to the car, I set her down in the trunk, then tied her hands, feet, and gagged her. Before closing the trunk, I checked to see if she was still breathing, and she was. As I drove home along the interstate, a million thoughts went through my head. One dominating thought, though, was, who am I? I didn't recognize myself. This was not something I ever thought I'd be capable of doing. As I pulled into the driveway, Marion came bursting out the front door with a sinister, excited look on her face. As I stepped out of the car, she said, Did you get me one, Keith? Yes, Marion, I did, I replied. I told you to call me Radna, she said angrily as she glared at me. I was scared of her, so I said nothing as I went and opened the trunk to show her what I'd brought home. Bring her inside and put her in the basement. I will start consuming her tomorrow, said Marion. I opened the garage door, pulled inside, and closed the door before getting the meat out of the trunk. I then carried the meat down into the basement and tied it to a pipe. As I came upstairs into the kitchen, Marion was standing there. She looked normal again. Her eyes were brown, and there was nothing different about her like I'd seen the other night. Come, let's go to bed, she said as she reached out, taking a hold of my hand, leading me into the bedroom. That night, we made love, and it was the best we've ever had. The next morning, I was awakened to some loud commotion coming from the kitchen. As I sat up, Marion came into the bedroom, dragging the meat behind her as the meat struggled to break free of her grip. I saw Marion's eyes and appearance had again changed. I knew what was about to happen, and I didn't want to be around when it did. I got up, quickly got dressed, and left the house. As I opened the door leading to the garage, I heard the most hideous screams I've ever heard in my entire life. It went on like this for years with Marion coming with me from time to time to catch her meat, which was always a horrific experience being she couldn't control her urges. That is, until you guys came bursting into our house. That, I thank you for. I'm tired, and just wanted it all to end. I've driven as far away as Oklahoma, Alabama, and even Winnipeg to find her more meat so as not to get caught. When she'd finished consuming one, I'd put the bones in a garbage bag and toss them somewhere along the way as I went to find her another piece of meat. She always had to have a fresh corpse under her bed. The girl you found running down the street happened because I purposely left her untied in the basement. One thing you wouldn't notice unless I tell you, Marion has not aged a day since she ate the first girl. I began noticing this years later after that day. The police found a half-eaten corpse under their bed. It turned out to be college student Amy Lee from Montana State University who had vanished from campus days earlier. Authorities repeatedly tried questioning Marion, but she would never speak a word. She was eventually put into the state's mental health facility, and there she resides today. She's not allowed to leave her room as she started biting other patients, taking pieces of flesh out of them as soon as she arrived. Keith took his own life in jail one week after he'd been arrested. For more scary horror stories, please subscribe. We're also offering memberships where you can watch videos only members have access to. Click on the link in the description to join.